Louis Vuitton has become synonymous today for luxury in the world. Only few people are aware that the renowned brand was founded by a homeless boy fleeing from his wicked stepmother. The multi-billionaire company has gone through several generational changes, bringing it to where it is today. As to the world's largest maker of luxury goods, what challenges did the French designer face on his entrepreneurial journey? How is the company currently managed? Stay tuned and keep on watching to find out. The name Louis Vuitton, which has now become iconic in the world of fashion, came from a humble background. Vuitton was born on August 4, 1821 in Anche, France. He grew up in a family of farmers and milliners in eastern France. Life took a downward decline for the young lad when his mother passed on when he was 10. His father remarried and brought in another woman that was very wicked to Vuitton. When the terrible treatment became too much for Vuitton to handle, he ran away from home, and at the age of 13, Vuitton was left to survive on his own in the streets as he journeyed to Paris. With a lot of determination to make ends meet, Vuitton took up odd jobs with artisans. Apart from the meager sum that he was paid, Vuitton also gained skills. Vuitton finally got to Paris in 1837 and worked as an apprentice for a luggage maker, Monsieur Marical. During the 19th century Europe, box making and packing was a reputable craft. A box maker and packer was responsible for making boxes to fit goods that would be stored in it. It was also the duty of the craftsman to personally load and unload the boxes. Vuitton's work stood out from among his colleagues, and he was highly sought after in the city. It was at this same time that Napoleon Bonaparte staged a coup d'etat. Exactly one year later, he assumed the title of Emperor of the French under the regal name Napoleon III. The re-establishment of the French Empire under Napoleon III favored the young Vuitton. Napoleon III's wife, the Empress of France, was Eugenie de Montijo, a Spanish countess. Upon marrying the emperor, she hired Vuitton as her personal boxmaker and packer and charged him with packing the most beautiful clothes in an exquisite way. As expected, working for the Empress was the boost that Vuitton needed in his career. It opened more doors into the world of the elite. Vuitton got married in 1854 to Clemence Emily Perrault. After the marriage, he opened his first shop at Rue Neuve de Capucine. The boxes available during this period had rounded tops, which allowed water to run off but did not secure the items inside. Vuitton modernized this idea of traditional luggage boxes by introducing his own innovative leather boxes with flat tops. The gray canvases used by Vuitton in the production of these luggage boxes remains the signature of the brand today. Everyone wanted to own Vuitton's box because it stood out from the normal ones. In 1867, Vuitton added modern handbags to his collection. Just like the luggage, the handbags were heavily demanded by women. Sadly, Vuitton's business came to a halt during the Franco-Prussian War. He had to seek refuge in a cramped shelter. After the war, resuming business was a major challenge for Vuitton, as all his materials had been stolen and there was nothing left for him to start with. To further worsen Vuitton's predicament, the Empress of France Eugenie was exiled and her husband lost his throne to the Prussians. Vuitton had to build back everything from scratch using his last savings. Due to the impact of the war, the prices of properties were low. This made it possible for Vuitton to set up his new shop at an upscale part of Paris, France. After successfully resuming business, Vuitton created a new luggage box with unique designs in 1872. The boxes had striped patterns and they were greatly loved by the people. In 1885, Vuitton expanded the business by opening a shop in London. Vuitton had now grown to have international clients including royals, wealthy Americans, and explorers. Since Louis was getting old, he brought his son, George, into the business to assist him. In 1886, Vuitton's son, George, invented a lock system that was impossible to pick. However, tragedy struck in 1892 when Vuitton died. The cause of his death could not be ascertained. 
Georges Vuitton stepped in after his father's death to oversee the affairs of the business. When Georges participated in a World Fair at Chicago, he met John Wanamaker, who established the concept of department stores and price tags. The pair then went into an agreement which enabled Wanamaker to start selling the Louis Vuitton bags in his New York department store. By 1930, Vuitton had created a distribution network all across America. In 1896, Georges created the famous monogram, a floral pattern with an L and a V that interlocked to honor his father's memory. Georges died in 1936, leaving the business for his son, Gaston, to manage. Gaston had issues handling the business because World War II had just started. He was left with no other option than to close down the factories and stores worldwide. After the war ended in 1946, Gaston Vuitton handed the business over to his sons. When Gaston died in 1970, the business suffered some hardships. The Vuitton brothers had differences, which made them to resolve that their brother-in-law, Henry Rackamir, should take over. Six years later, LV went retail, and the sales increased from $20 million to $260 million. By 1987, LV had reached $1 billion in sales by opening stores everywhere in the world. Rackamir joined the company with brands such as Moet Hennessy and created the LVMH brand. They also merged with Givenchy, Berluti, Gerla. Bernard Arnault, who was appointed as Rackamir's ally, has been the CEO since 1989. Arnault recently placed his 47-year-old daughter in charge of one of the company's leading labels, Christian Dior. The billionaire also replaced longtime Louis Vuitton CEO Michael Burke with Pietro Beccari. Beccari, 55, has been the head of Dior since 2018. Arnaud's daughter, Delphine Arnaud, has worked at Louis Vuitton for the past 10 years alongside Burke and previously spent a dozen years at Dior. Burke, who has also been chairman of jewelry arm Tiffany, will continue to work with Bernard. LVMH operates through the following business segments, wines and spirits, fashion and leather goods, perfumes and cosmetics, watches and jewelry, selective retailing and other activities and eliminations. LVMH has successfully put together many luxurious brands under one roof. This was initially an idea that many mocked, but Arnaud has proven it to be possible. Some of the brands that LVMH has acquired includes Louis Vuitton, Bulgari, Dior, Fendi, Givenchy, Gerla, Kenzo, Marc Jacobs, and Tiffany & Co. Moet. LVMH is based on a policy of decentralization. This allows each of its brand to develop independently. At the same time, brands also have a kind of synergy that stops them from competing with one another. LVMH has not been alone in bringing this synergy to reality. Merger and acquisition has played a significant role. M&A helped to provide synergies between companies in order to cut costs and generate additional revenue by integrating their existing markets. As a company, LVMH has stayed on top of the fashion world by drafting new consumer trend and innovations. Each subsidiary designer brand has five branches, strategic financials, talent management, creativity and culture, adaptability and responsiveness and diversification. These branches enable the companies to better position itself within the marketplace and makes every brand of LVMH unique from each other. The success of the LVMH business model has made it common in the luxurious industry. Other house of brands such as Caddy Group, Coach and Michael Kors are now in existence. The company has set the pace when it comes to leadership and management skills. Overall, LVMH is thriving and is a force to reckon with. With its current position, there are higher chances of LVMH earning more loyalty and popularity in the future. Louis Vuitton generates more than 40% of the LVMH net sales. To effectively manage demand and supply, Louis Vuitton is engaging in collaborations with high-tier street brands and possible sports brands where they had crossovers with Supreme and Off-White, etc. The brand Louis Vuitton, which was formed by a street boy trying to survive, continues to resonate all over the world. Its name and design still stand out even under LVMH. Vuitton's life is proof 
that anything is possible with determination and hard work. You never can tell. You might just be the next founder of a major brand. Which of the Vuitton's generations do you think made more impact on the brand? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. See you in the next video.